welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Halabukas, and once again, we're coming to you live from deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking AI startups, the future, not necessarily those and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast server, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, what are you talking about today? Oh, yes. <laughs> so if you're a Star Trek fan like I am, you know about the Borg, right? The Borg were these evil, evil race where they're portrayed as an evil, evil race, but they were basically communists, right? Okay, let's just let's just get right down to it. It was a a like a mesh network brain, whereas where they would like usurp you into they weren't they weren't really in they weren't individuals, they were uh, a mesh network. I don't know what you would call them, sort of like a co collective. That's right. That's what they call themselves. They were a collective, and these. Individual humans or individual races would be sucked into the collective and they would get these parts bolted into themselves and then they would be able to communicate with the collective and all the decisions were made by the collective and collective this and collective that. And when in, they initially were shown in Star Trek The Next Generation in the 90s, it was basically a you know individualistic versus collective kind of thing. It's like the individualistic... Starfleet officers, even though they were individuals, they worked together, but they worked together by choice to be able to defeat the collective Borg. So it was kind of like individualistic co capitalism over communism kind of metaphor sort of thing, right? But today we are the Borg, because if you ask me, and I've said this many times before, is that we cannot survive without our devices. If we do not have our devices, we literally become alert, inert. I mean, when was the last time you sat down and you read a book or you did something without being connected to some type of streaming device, without being connected to some type of phone, basically disconnected from the world, disconnected from the internet? Very rarely, right? I mean, hardly anybody ever does that. In fact, there have been studies where they've taken phones away from people and they've become practically catatonic which is exactly the same thing that would happen if somebody were to sort of remove an important organ from our bodies. We'd probably become catatonic. So these things have become organs. Even though they're not actually embedded in our bodies like they are with the Borg, they have become so essential to our lives that we can barely function without them. We can barely function without them. So if you ask me, we've already pretty much become cyborgs, we become Borgs already. We're already Borgs. And one of the things Star Trek has not done, whether they've done it in Discovery or in Stage New Worlds or any of these Sire series, has led to some kind of, and I always thought this was going to happen, that the Borg, even though they were portrayed as a completely alien race on the other side of the, ga of the, of the galaxy, they were never shown to be originated from mankind. But who knows, maybe we've actually started to create our Borg ourselves. So we, like I say, are Borg through our devices. We can barely survive without our devices. But there is a team right now creating or fusing human brain matter with AI. That's right, folks. They are creating literal Borg today in a lab. Why? Well, it's medical science, right? They're trying to figure out how to possibly attack some of these diseases that are causing us all sorts of mental anguish. You know, they're Parkinson's or any of these others that are causing us to lose our minds. So wouldn't it be amazing if we could use AI to somehow improve the lives of someone with Parkinson's or, or any of these other diseases that affect our brains? I mean, this is the thing, folks, is that so many people out there are so concerned about AI and what AI is going to do to us in a negative way. And like I say, I'm the optimistic futurist. I look at these things in a positive light. Like we were talking about before with jobs. So many people say, oh, there's so many people who are going to lose their jobs with AI. It's unbelievable. But you know what? 
I would not be surprised if more jobs, and if you look at the past, this is how it is. If you look at the past, whenever we've had some type of technological innovation, some kind of revolutionary technology, revolutionary technology, we always look at it from the front end of it um, going, oh my God, we're going to lose so many jobs with this. But then when we look back on it, we thought, wow, so many jobs were created with that technology. And everybody says the same thing about AI. They say, oh my God, well, this is very different from what's happened before. Well, I could say to you that that has also been said before. <laughs> Every time we've had a technological disruption like this, like the Industrial Revolution, the Information Revolution, the AI Revolution, every single time we've had this type of revolution, the same things have been said. We've all said that this is different from times before. We've all said that this is going to eliminate so much work and it's never going to, those jobs will never come back. Which is true, the jobs will never come back, but new jobs have always sprouted up to take place of those jobs. And those human beings who are resourceful, and this is the other thing, is that so many people feel that human beings are not resourceful enough. They don't have the intelligence to be able to take on this other work, to be able to do something different. But I believe in the, ex the, the huge capacity of the human brain to be able to learn how to do almost everything. And we need to step away from those jobs that are inhuman, that humans shouldn't be doing. I mean, this, 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 this rote, burdensome things where you're doing the same thing over and over again, like a machine, like a cog in a factory. Those kind of jobs are perfectly suited for AI. But the jobs where we where you need to be creative, where you need to create new things, where you need to imagine new products, where you need to imagine new things to help improve humanity. Those jobs will flourish. Because if you look at AI, if you look at where we are with AI, it can't do it. All it's doing is remixing stuff from before. It can't create anything new. It can't create anything different. It just can't do it. Maybe it'll do it at some point but it can't do it yet. So we all need to look at this with a critical eye and go, if my job is going to be eliminated by AI, what job can I do? Where can I go to find a new job that cannot be eliminated by AI, that requires human intuition, requires human instinct, requires human abilities, where can I go to find that kind of job? I said it long, long time ago that blue collar jobs, jobs where you actually have to work with your hands, create things individually out of the human brain. Those are the jobs that are not going to be eliminated by AI. Maybe eventually, maybe a hundred years from now. But today, if you're concerned, if you're just a pencil pusher and you're thinking to yourself, I'm going to lose my job to AI. Do something creative. Do something different. Do something humans, only humans can do. There's so many jobs out there that humans can only do right now. That's where you need to go. But it doesn't matter anyway, because eventually one day we'll all be Borgs, right? We'll all be Borgs. And we're all Borgs in certain ways anyway. We're all Borgs in some ways anyway. And I don't know, I mean, would you be interested in taking a vacation from your technology probably not probably not because we've already determined we if you think about it we've already expanded our brains so much with these devices that why would we ever want to go back i mean it was it's similar to what i was telling you before i said there was this novel series by samuel r delaney where they had this service called general intelligence and with general intelligence they had the chip implanted in your brain so that and it would automatically whenever you thought of a question it would pop it up to AIs in around orbit, and the AIs around the orbit would answer the question, it would pop right back into your head. This is basically what we have, folks. We have general intelligence in our pocket. And even better, 
we have general intelligence that can specifically answer the exact question that you had. For example, I had a question the other day about potato chips. I mean, it sounds random, right? But <laughs> I had a question the other day is that one of the things I noticed when I came to the States, which is interesting because I'm originally Canadian, one of the, th one of the questions I, 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 I noticed when I came to the States is that every time we ser they served a sandwich, they would serve it with a bag of chips. I mean, my first experience with a hot, with a hamburger at a restaurant was a burger with a bag of chips. And I thought, that's kind of strange. They never did that in Canada. I mean, they would do it with submarine sandwiches. They would do it with subs. Mr. Sub was a huge chain in Canada, but they were also inspired by an American chain from Buffalo. So why did, you know, why did we have potato chips served with sandwiches? And as it turns out, ChatGPT was able to give me the answer right away. I went to Google and I searched and I searched and I searched and I searched and I couldn't find the answer. There was all this history and there's about the guy who invented potato chips and all this stuff. But asking the question of when did potato chips become a side for sandwiches, only ChatGPT could answer that question for me. And not only that, it could answer that question for me without inundating me with ads and all that stuff. So like if you ask me, AI is going to make our lives so much better. It's already making our lives so much better. So if anything, we need to learn how to work with AI, to embrace AI, and use AI to help us live better lives. Use AI to help improve humanity instead of tearing it down, which is what I've always been about since I very since the very first show I ever did. Because I've been podcasting since 2005, and ever since 2005, my focus has always been on uplifting humanity. And AI is simply the latest tool we need to apply to uplift humanity. That's it for me for today. See you next time, and until then, don't forget to think future.